2009 brought Tyler the Creator's solo debut, Bastard, a raw project that would jumpstart his career and start a rambunctious revolution. This is what the devil plays before he goes to sleep. Some food for thought, this food for death, go ahead and fucking eat. The then LA teen entered the scene as the frontman of the rap collective Odd Future. OF had a myriad of members presenting a wide range of sounds, but Tyler's brash lyricism and bold attitude made him stand out. So I sold my soul to the devil for 30% off. And to you emo kids who walk around pissed off. Step one, pull your panties down and start to piss off. I hate everyone, and I want to be better than them, and I want them to know that. Bastard opens up with the introduction of Dr. TC, his lower pitch therapist, and a character of reason throughout the album. Tyler, hi, I'm Dr. TC, and um, I'm guessing that. Your teacher sent you here to talk because you were misbehaving. TC joins Wolf Haley as one of Tyler's many alter egos and voice alterations, something that would become a mainstay throughout his career. Tyler often adjusts his vocals to display different emotions, vibes, or identities, and he later admitted it's because he hates his voice, saying, quote, I think there are certain voices that can make it into a mainstream world because of the tone that they're in. It sits in this space that's easy listening for humans. I definitely don't have that voice, and I fucking wish that I did. But Tyler's very distinct voice is what aided in his demonic delivery of some misogynistic, violent, and shocking lyrics, like on French. I tell her it's my house, give her a tour in my basement, and keep that bitch locked up in my storage, break her and record it, to edit it with more shit. And homophobic slurs throughout the album. I'm a self-racist, you should take this ass set. I'm the rapist, I'm a fascist, fuck fashion, Gucci belt is fucking faggot. In 2017, he opened up about his sexuality, and it became a theme for a number of his works, contradicting his earlier lyrics. But in an interview with Arsenio Hall back in 2013, he defended his use of the word. When I say that word, I'm not thinking of someone's sexual orientation or anything, it's just another word that has no meaning. That shock value, similar to Eminem's before him, added to the rapper's appeal and generated a large buzz in fan base. Okay, now what about your lyrics? What about them? What are you saying in your lyrics? Nothing. Shit to piss old white people off like you. Before the use of Instagram Live, Tyler and crew connected with their fans through Tumblr, where their music was virtually free, and their self-made videos provided a behind-the-scenes look at their lives. I'm in the fucking studio with the homie Big T Dollars. Shit, was studio session. I don't know, man. This nigga just some shit. That black bitch. That's B clap. Hot ass B. Oh, shit! Their robust online presence served as an answer to being largely ignored by popular rap sites like Two Dope Boys and Not Right, which Tyler was quick to call out several times on the album. Crafted by Tyler himself on FL Studio and Logic, the album's production is simple, but boasted a range of sounds like the sprawling piano and distorted synths on Bastard. The glitchy beat on VCR. And one of the most complex tracks, Blow. The track was written after listening to Snoop Dogg's Neptune produced Let's Get Blown. The NERD influences show up on the Sid Assisted hook, as well as the pronounced drums and synths throughout the track. It was Easter of 2002, and I heard the song Tape You from In Search Of on the radio. Okay. I was like, what the f because this is the greatest song I've ever heard. Ever since I found out who that was, I've been a f***ing stan for the Neptunes. In addition to the violent lyrics, Tyler found time to address a range of topics on the album, like growing up on Parade. Go to college, get a job, marry, have a kid, watch him grow and then you die. No, make the fuck the system. And his lovelorn cut, Sarah, that starts as an ode to young love. You make a nigga sing songs nice. You make a nigga nighttime day and you make the flower sing say turn gray yellow. Suck that I didn't get the chance to say hello. But ends with a gruesome attack. I wanna tie her body up and throw her in my basement. Keep her there so nobody can wonder where her face went. Most of his tracks mention violence against others, specifically women, which resulted in him getting banned from performing in the UK and New Zealand later in his career. In an interview, he spoke to his creative process and that these themes are just what was on his mind. All he talks about is rape. Have you seen Quentin Tarantino's fucking movie? Why does everyone fucking get their dick cut off or some shit? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why nobody say nothing about that? It's fucking art. Why when a fucking black kid says that it's such a big fucking deal? But the most significant theme is on the album's outro and Glorious, which focuses on Tyler's lack of relationship with his dad. I know I'm not the only bastard in America. With 
the help of Dr. TC, Tyler reveals what he would tell his father if he got the chance. Tyler, if, uh, if you had the chance to tell him something, what would you tell him? But back on Inglorious, the artist channels his anger into self-inflicted violence and leaves a parting note to the father who left. I'ma get out the M16 and let a fucking clip out. Cause in 16 years you let your kid out the existence. None. I don't give a fuck either. Like father, like son, I'm done. I think if I had a dad, I would have went the normal college route and like like a lot of other people. So you're not angry at I'm so stoked my life panned out how it was. With his gritty production and shocking lyrics, Bastard laid the blueprint for the rest of Tyler's career. His emotional vulnerability continues to be a mainstay in this music. I'm one of those artists where I'm, you're gonna know where I'm at in my life based off my music. So, like, no matter what. He continues to make love ballads like the aforementioned Sarah and VCR slash Wheels, though less intense, with tracks like I Fucking Hate You, See You Again, and New Magic Wand. And collaborated with mentors like Skateboard P for a number of tracks and performances. The stories you used to tell me about listening to our albums and then to get to see you have a show and we're out there performing and it's your show. You know that life is real and the universe is real and, and we're lucky to be here. As his musicianship began to grow, he shed the trolling persona that put him on the map, saying, quote, when my music got better, I asked myself, why do Kanye and Pharrell and Jay-Z respect me, but the people that respect them don't fuck with my music? Well, maybe if I stop being funny on the internet, people will focus on my talent. He also blossomed outside of music, creating his own fashion brand and directing his own videos, and even scoring a movie. Who is this mean fellow with his skin all green and his teeth all yellow? And 10 years after Bastard, he released his critically acclaimed number one album, Igor, that showcases growth and range as a producer, artist, and creative director. Over the last decade, Tyler has continued to redefine his sound while staying true to his vision from the beginning. And fans are excited for what's to come next from Tyler, the creator. I'm Delisa with Genius News, bringing you the meaning and the knowledge behind the music.